Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Compass Ministries here at Compass Community Church. I love this. Everybody's chit chatting, having a good time. Keep talking, guys. Uh, the fellowship, the ability to come together and worship as a family, as brothers and sisters in Christ, is awesome. It's so great to have all of you with us here this morning. We're really excited for our worship service. I want to get a couple announcements out of the way. Really good announcements. Uh, as we're working through this summer, we're talking about the process of growing, the process of Compass Ministries and loving God and loving people and serving. And we've got a couple of great examples of loving people and serving that are going to be going on. I just want to let everyone know to get on the calendars. First of all, the Climber Community BDS uh, signups are due in three days, so the 30th. So um, if you go to www.abbey.church, so it's A-B-E-E.church, um, you can sign your kids up for the Climber BDS that's happening on July 17th. It's a Saturday, it's a family event, there's still some adjustments being made for, you know, trying to keep everyone together with their families and moving around, so they're doing a one-day event. You can check out details on the website. And secondly, um, there's going to be an event coming up at uh, the Camp at Finley called Awake. Um, that is a, a concert on, on July 31st, a really awesome worship night with multiple bands. And before that, on Friday night, we had a little mentor retreat. Okay, and if you choose tent camping, which I still need to talk to my back about that. <laughs> um, you choose tent camping, we're going to have Corey Turbin uh, from, from our congregation. He's going to be speaking that Friday night uh, at 7.30. But you can show up as, as soon as 3 o'clock that day. They're going to have hot dogs in the evening, and there's going to be breakfast in the morning uh, if you choose to stay all the way through. Uh, Les, uh, UTEC is going to be speaking on Saturday morning as well, so you can able to stick around for that. If you want to make a big weekend of it. Uh, you can stick around for Saturday night uh, for the worship music. Uh, there's going to be uh, four different worship groups uh, uh, Saturday night. So throw those on your calendar. Friday, July 30th, guys, uh, get together for the, for the men and also uh, part of VPS if you want to get signed up. So enough announcements. Who wants to worship? Woohoo! Yeah? All right. Let's rise up on our feet and get it started this morning. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Jordan and
because there are times in life when God isn't going to answer your prayers just think the way you think he should. And there are times the mountains are not going to move. And those are when the times come when you have to really trust God, even when you don't know what the outcome is going to be. And so I pray that that song becomes a prayer for you. It's a prayer we're going to pray in a minute over the graduates. And just a reminder that there's a box on the table in the back. If you feel like to give an offering, you can put it in that box on the table. If you're online, you can get on our website, whatisthecompass.org, and find the ways to give online as well. Um, for the kids' time today, a little fist bump for all of the kids uh, who are here and who are watching online. Uh, for the kids today, I want you to look at the people that are going to come forward. So I'm going to invite the seniors to come forward. Don't worry, you don't have to give a big elaborate speech or anything. You just have to come forward and look really pretty. So, And handsome. Sorry, Slavic. Uh, so we're going to have the seniors come on down and come forward. Uh, we had the Climber Baccalaureate on, was it just this week on Monday night? Feels like about a month ago. It's been a big week. So we had Baccalaureate Monday night, uh, but some schools uh, didn't have Baccalaureate, and so we wanted to kind of have our own little mini Baccalaureate for the kids' time today. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to tell you each of their names and um, a little bit about how much I love them and where I think they're all going, and then you can add in, and then I'm going to have some parents and other people come forward and pray over them. Um, this is Lizzie. Say hi. hi. Uh, we met Lizzie at our Footsteps Retreat. She actually goes to graduate from Chautauqua Lake, and she is planning on going to Westminster, and she's going to change the world. So you met her here. This is Lizzie. This is Ani. Ani also is a graduate of Chautauqua Lake, and we also met Ani at Footsteps. Uh, in fact, all of these kids are footsteppers, are you not? Whoop whoop! Shout out for Footsteps, yep. Uh, Ani is going to home, and Ani is also going to change the world. That's right? Amen. Um, what's your name again? <laughs> yeah. We're going to skip this one so I don't cry. I'm just kidding. This is Grace Beckering. Uh, Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, Grace graduated from Climber, and she's going to Cedarville University with her brother in six short weeks. We're not talking about it. She also is going to change the world or come home and live in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> this is Alexa, not Alexis, correct? This is an inside joke for anybody who would want to You're welcome, Mom. <laughs> yeah. This is Alexa Turbin, who graduated from Corey High School. Alexa is going to Mercyhurst, correct? Right? And she also is going to change the world. Her parents also have been praying for her since she was a wee one, so look out. This is Katie Downs. Katie graduated from the Downs Academy of Amazing Pennsylvania High School. Woo I heard her principal was a little tough, but she made it. I know she's kind of a problem child, but it's all right. There's hope for her. Uh, Katie, we also, all these guys, well, we met Katie first at Footsteps too, I think, right? Oh my gosh, I love Footsteps. Big plug for footsteps. If you're a freshman, sophomore, junior in high school, get a hold of us. There's going to be a footsteps in November. We want you to go. Uh, Katie graduated from what? Yeah, huh? Katie's going to lead the footsteps that weekend, not to give too much away, so you really want to go. <laughs> Katie graduated from homeschooling, and she's going to stay here and sing on our praise team. Thank you, Jesus. I want her current plan, because I know it's been online, it's been JCC, it's been... I want to be a vet tech, so I'm not sure exactly where it She's going to be a vet tech. The Lord's going to use her. Anybody know John Swabek? If you ever read the Post Journal, maybe you've seen his name once, twice, a thousand times in the last four years. Congratulations again on all the thousands of records you've broken. John is graduating from Sherman Central School, Wildcat. Even though we're from Climber now that we're CSP, we love you, so we're good with Sherman people. We welcome all schools and communities in this church. We're the body of Christ. John's going to Colorado, so he's going the furthest away. Pray for Michelle and Big John. Um, and what are you majoring in besides track and field and awesomeness? He doesn't know yet, but the Lord is going to use you. All of these guys know at Footsteps, they learn Matthew 5, that you are salt and you are light. And so we're going to send you off to be salt and light. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to have you guys uh, spread out a little bit. And then I'm going to have you turn to look at me, and I'm going to share some scripture with you and all the kids, and then I'm going to have some parents come forward. Um, so Grace gave a speech on Friday night at our graduation, and she had three points in it, and they came from Romans 5, uh, Philippians 4, and Hebrews 12, which is uh, a verse that Katie likes because she gave me this bracelet. I encourage you to go watch her speech and look up those scriptures, but these were her three main points that I want to share with you. You need to go and grow through the things that happen to you in life. 
You gotta keep going and keep growing. So it doesn't end just because you finished high school. You got a whole life ahead of you. You're just starting all over. The second point that Grace made was to look for light. You're gonna go to Colorado. You're gonna go do on all these courses. You're gonna be at Mercyhurst. You're gonna be in Ohio. You're gonna go to Houghton. You're gonna go to Pennsylvania, Pasadena City, and you're gonna have dark times. I wish I could tell you it's always gonna be awesome and full of light, but there'll be dark times. Look for the light when that happens, because there will be light. Remember your footsteps memories. Remember some of the light moments there, like Saturday night. You know what I'm talking about. Remember those moments and let the light guide you. And then finally, Grace talked about Hebrews 12 and running the race with perseverance, keeping your eyes on Jesus. The one thing all of us could pray for you guys is that your eyes are on Jesus as you leave here. That's the most important thing for all of us. So I'm going to actually ask you to spread out a little bit. Uh, if there are parents or family members here, and some of them don't have parents or family members, so if you know them and you love them, come forward. I don't want everyone to come forward because we'll break every COVID rule and we'll all be like sweating buckets. But I do want at least two or three people laying hands on each of them. So come forward and grab somebody to lay hands on them. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to open us with a prayer. And then I'm going to leave space if anyone else wants to pray. Pray loudly because you're not all might. And then I'm going to go ahead and close us in prayer as well. So I'll give everybody time to come forward and come on up. Gather ye all around. All right, everybody's got hand on them. Don't make them sweat too hard, but I want them to feel, feel the love on them. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. So let's pray. God, we thank you for these amazing seniors, these graduates now, these children of yours. God, we love them. We love them so much. We've watched them grow. We've watched them become who you want them to be, and we're so proud of them. God, thank you for entrusting us with the gift of them. Thank you that each of these beautiful people have walked through footsteps and experienced that changed their life and brought them closer to you. Thank you that you have called them to be salt and light and to go out and to share and shine that salt and flavor the world and shine your light in the darkness. God, I do pray for them. I pray from Ephesians 3, what we prayed and preached and talked about last week. May they be made strong from the inside out. Give them strength from the Holy Spirit. God, I pray that you would do more than we can ask or imagine in them and through them. God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would be at work in them and through them. I pray they would know that always have a home here. I thank you for their gifts and their passions. We can't wait to see what you're going to do with them. So we love them and we pray a blessing over them and we ask that you hear the prayers of all of us who love them. Dear Father, thank you for these graduates. Mm -hmm. um, empower them with um, faith, hope, and great love mm -hmm. as they walk in your light, Lord, and go out and glorify you with their talents. Help them to always remain fixed with their eyes on you, and for them to always feel your presence. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, to trust in you with all of our hearts, 
and lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways to acknowledge you. And you will guide and lead us down the path you have for us. So God, we lift up these graduates to you. We pray for Lizzie and Ani and Grace and Alexa and Katie and John and ask that you would give them the strength to trust in you with all of their heart. We ask that you would guide their path. We ask that you would use them in a mighty way. And we thank you for the gift of their presence in our lives. We love them so much. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Grant, I want you to stay up here. Don't leave yet. The parents can go ahead and sit down. All right, so I want you to come back together again now. And then look at me for a second. So, Monday night, our back, Gloria, uh, Grace, and her friend Maddie and Emma sang a song from the musical Wicked, and it's called For Good. And there's a line in the song that says, Because I knew you, I have been changed for good. And just as the personal for me as your pastor, because I've known all of you, I have been changed for good. You have inspired me to keep studying God's word and preaching it. You have inspired me to love you and to want to keep doing this ministry thing. And I thank you for that. I've shared a lot of tears and laughter and hugs with all of you at youth group, at footsteps, sleepless nights, all of that. When Grace sang, I cried, and then I had to stand up and speak, and when I spoke, she cried. But the other thing that I shared with the group Monday night is that when Grace was little, she used to come wake us up in the middle of the night, and it was cute the first time. <laughs> After that, it wasn't cute, because she was four or five, and JoJo was an infant, and so he was nursing and not sleeping, and it would be three in the morning, I would be so exhausted, we'd finally get Joe to sleep, and little Miss Curly, he would come, Mom, I had a bad dream, Mom! She learned to go to her dad's side of the bed because I got annoyed quickly. And then I locked the bedroom door because my dad didn't to sleep because he worked with power tools and I wanted his fingers all intact. And we used to go into her room and we would pray with her and we would read scripture with her to calm her down. And I finally realized in my parenting something very valuable. It's not my job to pray for grace and teach her scripture. It is, but at some point it has to become her faith. And so we went into her room the one night and I said, here's your Bible, Grace. Open it up. You can read. You find a verse to read when you're scared at night. You pray to God. You don't need me to do it for you anymore. Now I miss that, and I wish she would come wake me up in the middle of the night. But when you go to college, you can't go down the dorm room, and you can't, well, you still can maybe if your parents let you wake them up. But you, you can't drive from Colorado to Sherman in 10 seconds. You can't say, Mom, I'm scared. I need you to pray for me. I mean, you can text and call us every day. Please do, and you can all do that with me as well. You have my contact stuff. But your faith has to be your own. And that's our prayer for you as you go forth, that you take God's word and you take the scriptures and you take the Holy Spirit and it's with you. And we're still here. So you come back and visit us and you come to you here on Saturday nights and you come to worship on Sunday morning. You always have a home here. Always. So the other scripture that I shared with them is what we taught Grace when she was little. I will not fear. God is with me. It's from Isaiah 41.10. So I want you to say that with me so you know it. I will not fear. I will not fear. God is with me. Hey, now you say it. Seniors, pass the test. So that's the gift we give you as you leave. But you know you can always come back, right? Right, group hug. I love you guys. You good people. Shameless plugs. Okay, is there anything else to do today? Oh yeah, we got a sermon and more to go. Uh, we're going to sing a song now. So take a deep breath. Breathe in. Let it out. Breathe in. Breathe out. What's the next song, right? No one reflects. That's what I thought. This is Grace's favorite song, so she wanted to sing this one. This is also for the graduates and comes out of the Isaiah 41 pen. We're not slaves to fear. We're children of God. So if you have anything inside of you that causes you fear this morning, just let it go and give it to Jesus. Let's sing.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much that this is such a reality, that we are your children, and we want to spend the rest of our life learning what that means, learning about your closeness, your focus for us, the smile that is on your face as you watch us to grow, to stumble and fall and to get back up again, dust ourselves off by your help, by your help and continue on. God, let us know what it means that you are a good father to us all. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So when it comes to the large question of life's direction, so let me say that again. Don't miss this one. <laughs> when it comes to the large question of life's direction, we've all got three options. We're either ascending, we're level, or we're descending. So let's start with the third option, descending. Nobody, and I mean nobody, wants to live a descending life. Nobody does. Not a single human being on the face of the earth says, one year from now, I want to be more bitter than I am right now. I want to be more angry, more wrathful, more malicious, more unforgiving, and more hopeless than I was a year ago. You know, I had so unforgiving, ugh, successful year. <laughs> nobody says that. Nobody wants that. So nobody wants to be on a descending path in life. Let's go to the other side. Ascending. Ascending, on the other hand, means going up a hill. And who, on the other hand, wants to spend the rest of their life going up a hill? I mean, that sounds hard. That is hard. So, what we probably all, at one point in our life or another, and maybe even today, and maybe you'll go, that's me. We all try, at one point or another, to just live a level life, right? To live a life where we're not getting any worse than we are. We're trying hard to not get worse, but we're also doing our very best to not intentionally take that uphill path. Because that uphill path means that our muscles are going to get sore, and our hearts are going to be fatigued. And we're probably going to break a sweat, probably even smell bad. And who wants to go through the rest of their life smelling bad, right? Nobody. So we want to try to avoid the exertion that's needed to take the uphill path as well. So we try to end the year, generally speaking, on a fairly level plane. Not getting worse, but not having to exert the effort necessary to get appreciably better. But here's the problem. The problem with attempting to live a level life is this. It doesn't account for the forces that are at play on our life. If we plan on living for a while, which I think we all do, if we plan on living for a while, there are forces at play that change your direction without asking your permission. There are forces at play on your life that change your direction without asking your permission. So let me paint a picture for you. And those of you who shoot things, whether it be bullets or arrows, I think you're going to have an understanding of what I'm saying. So in the study of ballistics, there are forces at play on the bullet as it travels that change the trajectory of the bullet that simply exist and they must be accounted for if our goal is to hit the target that we're aiming at. So um, in simple terms, though the big three are gravity, drag, and wind, right? So gravity, when the bullet or the arrow is traveling, gravity is naturally going to pull it down. 
Drag is like the dog that has its head stuck out the truck window and it's flapping in the wind, right? An object moving through air is going to have resistance. It's going to cause it to slow. And then wind is going to work to drag it off uh, trajectory. So a bullet traveling through air has these three factors that simply exist exerting on it that change its direction without asking its permission. And so if your target is 10 yards away, you know, if you're shooting 10 yards, you probably don't have to worry about this. But if your goal is out 100 yards or maybe 1,000 yards, you definitely do. This is exactly the same with your life. Now, if you're planning on, like, dying at noon tomorrow, then you don't have to worry about this. But if you have, if you consider that you may live for years, maybe even decades, you definitely do. Because just as there's factors at play on the bullet, there are factors that are on play in your life that cause your life to arc um, off its trajectory without asking your permission. Just as it's gravity, drag, and wind for a bullet, Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 says the big three that act upon a human life are the world, the flesh, and the devil. And we preach on this all the time, so I'm not going to spend much time here, but we all know these things. That there are factors that just exist. They simply exist in the world that act upon us, working to change the trajectory of our life. There is this sinful nature at play inside of us that acts to change our life. And um, if that wasn't hard enough, there is one called the devil who wants nothing more than to drag us away from God. So there are factors at play on our life that change the trajectory of our life without asking our permission. And if we try to live a level life, if that's the target, and I try to shoot straight at it, these three things are going to drag me off course unless I account for them. So, you know, our, our life will end up arcing in a descending fashion. So all of this is to say a simple thing, that you cannot live a level life and expect to hit the target at the end of it. So you cannot live a level life. So when we look at this, nobody wants to live a descending life we can't just live level and expect to hit the target at the end of it. So that really leaves us with one big option. And, and this is the decision that, you know, it would be great if we made it collectively, but in order to make it collectively, every single person has to make this decision in your life. And that is, if I don't want to live a descending life, and I can't, because of the way the world is, live a level life, that I just better get about the business of living an ascending one. That's the only real option. And I want to say, yes, it's hard. Yeah, it's a hard path, but every path is hard. Being more angry, more bitter, more malicious, more hopeless, more unforgiving, that's way harder, right? Everything is hard. So why don't we get about the business of deciding to live the kind of hard that's going someplace good? And that's a decision that every single one of us needs to finally make. And we got to let go of the fallacy that we can just live a level life and hit the target at the end of it. So today is an introduction to a series of sermons that we're going to be kind of hopscotching through um, through the summer and the fall on the Psalms of Ascent. This is 
Psalm number 120 through Psalm 134. So the Psalms of Ascent, I just kind of want to give you uh, the background of what this is. So when the Hebrew pilgrims would travel up to Jerusalem um, three times a year to worship at the temple, they would uh, sing or recite these psalms as part of their travel. Now geographically, Jerusalem was the highest city in the land of Israel. So no matter where you're from, every person who's traveling to Jerusalem is traveling an ascending path. So they kind of, the Psalms kind of get their name this way, that, you know, you are traveling up to Jerusalem, you're ascending, and you're saying these Psalms, so the Psalms of Ascent. But they, of course, have a deeper meaning than that. These are also, um, every one of these Psalms um, is acting out a life that is living, being lived upward toward God. A life that is advancing from one level to the next in maturity. And so it's what Paul called the upward call of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So to this point, I just want you to get the point that you cannot live just, I'm just going to go straight through life and hit the target. Um, we have to live ascending or we're not going to hit the target. So I just, at this point, at this moment, I just want you to wrestle with that decision and by the grace of God, if you haven't made it, to make that decision. That I'm going to take the hard path that's going someplace good. So when it comes to this big question of the direction of your life, I want you to, I want to kind of give you a couple images that God, our good Father, gives to us that when we apply them to our life, they can change the entire direction just by the way we view our life. So God is going to give us two images, and I'm going to go through them pretty briefly because we're going to be spending the rest of this series talking about those things. But in order to get those well, I want to supply kind of a contrast in one that you may be able to relate to, one that um, is going to be way over here as opposed to what God tells us, which is way over here. So the first image is that of a tourist. We may be able to even say it is, it is that of a religious tourist. So what's the life of a tourist? A tourist is, generally speaking, a good person who just every once in a while needs a break. I mean, you're bombing through life. Things are hard. Things come at you that you don't expect. You get tired. You get bogged down. And every once in a while, for the love of God, please, I just need to leave this life for a moment and go over here and just take a week and get out of my normal life. And just experience this so long overdue love and some joy and some peace. And then at the end of the vacation, we take a deep breath and then we plunge back into the grinder of our normal life. Right? We all do that. I do that. We go on vacation just to, I just need a little love, joy, and peace for a little stretch of time to kind of rejuvenate me so that I can get back into the grinder of life. The problem with this is, and you're all experiencing that, for those of you who are on vacation, sorry. (laughs) The problem with this is, as you all know, you get home, and there's like 400 messages. 400? And then there's eight fires that you need to put out. There were only two fires when I left. Who did all of this? So we get back, and all of a sudden, there's all these things that we have to figure out in life. There's, um, it takes about a month to recover from the vacation that we just took. I can remember when we were kids, and the family used to go on vacation for a week, and I would grow up on a dairy farm. And so when we would go on vacation, and we would come back, if I remember correctly, every time the cows would drop in milk, right? I mean, it's like, ah, they must have missed us or something. I don't know what it was. But that kind of says, hey, there is a price to pay 
in your normal life for having gone on vacation, right? There is a price to pay in normal life for having gone on vacation. So we tend to treat our life of faith in the same way. And I want to say that this is not a preacher pointing a finger at people. This is a preacher who has lived it enough times to recognize it, right? So we do this in our life of faith as well. We're bombing through our normal life. And it's like, for the love of might, I just need a break for a minute. And so we take an hour and we go to church. Or we go to a Bible study. Or we just stop and do our devotion. And then we take a deep breath, and then we come back and unpause and continue to live our normal life just as it was before. I'm going to take a second here. And so we resume our life, and we just bomb on living it as we did before. And the problem with this whole scenario is the main focus here is getting through our normal life. And maybe we go to church or go to a Bible study or do a devotion and we just hope to glean a little something helpful so that we can come back in life and maybe just have a little more unction or a little more energy or a little more focus than we did before. The problem is, this is just us living our normal life. Our main focus is on our normal life. And it gets really frustrating. Because at the end of the day, and over the course of time, it almost seems like we're just losing ground. I'm really not gaining a lot, and frankly, I'm losing time. And so it gets frustrating living life as a religious tourist. So that's what we're not supposed to do, in case I haven't been clear about that. So then God provides us two images in the scripture. And again, I'm just going to go through these two briefly because this is what we're going to spend our time on. And he says, this is an image for your life that I want you to put in place. Because if you put this in place over the long haul, it will change the course of your life. So the first one is life as a disciple. Life as a disciple. A disciple is a person who lives her life or lives his life in service to the master, Jesus Christ. And so every single moment in life is you following the master and doing what the master does and going where the master goes. It is not an academic um, excursion. It's more like working in the shop of a craftsman. It's not gaining information about God. It's gaining skills for a life of faith in God. So this is not like the tourist. It is not vacating your normal life in order to just, just experience a little bit of love and joy and peace so that I can make it in my normal life. It is about taking the love and the joy and the peace and integrating it into the everydayness of your life. Doesn't that sound way better? That's the life of a disciple. It's not pausing life to go experiencing these good things. It's integrating them into your life. So it's not stepping out of your life as normal. It's making you more capable of living your life. So life as a disciple. The other image that God gives is that of a pilgrim. So uh, Peter says in his letter, Beloved, I urge you as strangers and pilgrims. So I don't want you to think so much like broad-brimmed hat and mayflower, per se. But when I say pilgrim, biblically speaking, I want you to think well-equipped traveler on a long-term journey to someplace better. It is a person who is spending their life going someplace, going to God, and spending their life on an ascending path. And as John tells us, or as Jesus tells us in John, that pathway is Jesus himself. 
So it is a life of, of spending our life going somewhere. Um, and and uh, Paul says, if we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are of all people the most to be paid. He, he is basically saying, if you go through this life hanging on to Jesus just for the things in this life, we're most to be paid. And I was thinking about that week and that this week and thinking about how in like, my life, and you can probably say this too, I have a lot of wonderful people in my life and I have a lot of things for which I am extremely thankful and a ton of stuff that I enjoy. But if I don't hold those things loosely and, and make God and life in heaven with God forever, my main focus that I am living a very shallow version of the Christian life. So let me kind of wrap this up this way. On this journey, on this ascending life, we simply need help. And the Psalms of Ascent are there for that reason. They offer courage and they offer support and they offer direction for those who are on their way to God. So through the summer and into the fall, we will be looking at this psalm, these psalms for help. And because of the love of God and the work of Jesus and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life, we will be helped. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you provide for us so richly. And we pray that we would cement these images into our minds, that we not be tourists, but Father, that we be disciples and we be pilgrims traveling through this life on an ascending plane to life with you forever. So God, let that wash over us and become the way we view our life. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Mike started writing this sermon a while ago. I finished it at the beginning of the week before some events that happened in our life on Friday. And I looked at him at one point Friday and I had angst inside of me and tears pouring down my face. And I kindly, as a loving wife does, pointed at him and said, this is your fault. You wrote this sermon, you want to live this ascending life, and you say, thank God for hard times, and Aaron, we should be glad this is happening. It grows our faith, and I'm like, I just want to love a life. Do you just want a day where it's like, if, if being on fire for Jesus means Satan's going to attack me, I will choose mediocre and lukewarm 10 days out of the week. And that's wrong. And my wiser husband points that out to me. So if you don't have a wise husband like Mike, find someone listen to his sermon again, he will point you that way. It's not easy, you guys. Life is hard, and none of us want to climb up a big hill, but it's what strengthens us. And as we sing this last song, I want to remind you of last Sunday, and if you weren't here, please go back and watch it, and then go back and watch the week before, because Mike started talking about trees and roots and how we have to be rooted in Christ, because otherwise, when the storms come, the tree falls over. There are bad things that happen to all of us. Car accidents happen. Bad things. Cancer strikes. Dads die. People lose things that are important to them. But as we ascend, we grow closer to Jesus. And last week we prayed Ephesians 3. Our family said we were going to pray those four things all week, and we turned it into five because there's five of us. And Joe Weissley said, I can't pray all five. We each pick one. So last week we prayed in Ephesians 3 for what? Inner strength? Not dependent on our circumstances. We pray for our hearts to be rooted in what? In Jesus. So that when the bad things happen, we're rooted in him. We pray for the Holy Spirit to work in us and through us. We pray for the fullness of God. I want the fullness. I want to ascend. I will admit my husband's right. And we pray, finally, at the end of Ephesians 3, for God to do more than we ask or imagine. You graduates, God wants to do more than you can ask or imagine in the future. 
So give it to him. Let him do it. This last song is going to remind us. This is the goodness of God. This reminds us of his faithfulness. All of our lives, he's been faithful. All of our lives, he's been good. Let's live that out this week. Let's ascend together and celebrate the goodness of God. Uh, as we leave, just an invitation to all of you. Grace's graduation party is tonight from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock at the Dutch Village. You're all welcome. We're going to have more pie and sweet rolls than we can possibly partake of. So please come celebrate Grace with us. Uh, and let's celebrate the goodness of God. Oh, my God.